So I think it's like a long process. I don't think it's one of those things where, where you know, this trauma happens and everybody is affected immediately in the same way. I think it's kind of a long process and a long kind of an even realization that you were affected. Like, you know, some people, you know, your day-to-day -day life is not affected. You do your thing and you go to the next thing and and it's not like you're, you know, breaking down and crying every minute of the day, you know. And I'm sure the people that are trying to rebuild their house and trying to, you know, they are more impacted on a day-to-day -day basis trying to deal with the, you know, the mess of that. Um, but I think over the long period of time, everybody's impacted and they just realize it in different stages and at different times. I am learning more and more about the, uh, we're experiencing so much trauma and especially the Latino community that has the dual um, trauma of uh, immigration and the DACA students and, and then dealing with the firestorm and, the, and losing their jobs and losing their homes and, and just, I feel like I, I need to stay connected. I cannot leave. And this is part of the solution that I see that needs to happen here in Sonoma County. It's been a long, it's, it's, it's been a long 10 months or so. And, and I think I just feel like I just kind of landed in this workshop. And I could see where um, uh, I could be much more present in the moment. And I, and I believe that the more present I am with a client, with somebody who needs to speak to me, the more present I am, I think the more helpful I can be. And I think the more helpful I am for them, well, really, the more helpful I am for myself. And that was a very powerful moment in this workshop, the mindfulness in the moment. You know, I had, I had suspected this might be true, but, but I actually saw, you know, some evidence-based information that, that actually, um, you know, hope can grow out of trauma. Uh, for me personally, I'm trained as a scientist. I'm a plant pathologist by training. So scientific data is always, in fact, that may be one of my downsides. I, I'm kind of often more in my head than my heart. Um, and so um, kind of being able to see both sides of that, both the data, but also the heart, um, was, was really um, energizing for me. And what this really does is it helps us be the master of our own healing um, because self-care is a process. It really, I love what, what Jim said today. Like it really is you experimenting and not someone else telling you what works, but you feeling. I also think of going like beyond mindfulness to heartfulness, like you've got to feel it inside because you know what's right, your gut brain and everything else um, tells you what's going on. The combination of things that were shared today are things that people are hungry for uh, because they want to have a sense of self-mastery. They want to be the, you know, the king or queen of their own castle, but ultimately like feel like they, they can regulate. Um, and I don't think a lot of people feel that way. And so breath and movement, uh, we know is a way to directly tap into that and kind of rejigger the human computer. Knowing that we can't talk our way through trauma, sometimes we have to use image and movement and visual art to get there. Mm -hmm.